10, 9, 8. We have a go for main engine start. This is the ascent portion of our mission. The countdown of the Cape just went flawless. We were really, really pleased with the way things went down, went on down there. The engine's starting. You can see the shock waves come out of the throats of the, the nozzles. The nozzles vibrate. The engines get up and stable in about six seconds. Uh, solid rocket motors fire, and, and we're off. And, uh, for a new guy doing this the first time, it's really a thrill. And that thing feels like being on a rough train when the solid rocket motors are fine. If y'all have been on a rough railroad track, that's about what it feels like. And uh, it's a very interesting ride. You can function normally. And right before we lifted off, Crip said, get ready for the ride of your lives. And he was right. It's the ride of your life. So it's still really a super. big throw on your third time too. <laughs> the uh, one of the one of the neat things about this mission was we we're going to do direct insertion into orbit, so we didn't do an orbital maneuvering system one burn right after the main engines cut off. So we're going right into orbit off the pad, and we're going up 250 miles. So the trajectory and everything was a little bit different, and it made a, made a real interesting ride out of it. The uh, solid rocket motors, the engines, and everything just are magnificent. We didn't have a glitch the whole ascent, which is really nice. You don't want any glitches when this kind of stuff's going on outside your window. <laughs> we all kept on watching Crip make sure this is the way it's really supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, solid rocket motors separated. They saw the uh, plumes from the uh, separation motors. Those fog up our windows pretty good up front. They, they put a haze on the, on the forward windows when they go off. And you get a nice flash in the windows, but it's a nice smooth separation. Here you see us maneuvering attitude and the small uh, attitude uh, jets firing. We did an experiment so you could appreciate the acceleration we get out of these rocket engine firings. We put eight ounces of water on the mid-deck, and here you see it traveling across, and Dr. Bartow is catching it. We also tried to sleep through some of these burns, and we staged this next scene to show you what it felt like in the bunk. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> that was a great train wreck. <laughs> Believe it or not, some of them slept through those once they got used to it. You do tend to eat in space like you do underground? Almost. Almost. <laughs> Some of us do. <laughs> at, least, at least I eat in space. I eat like I do underground. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so did Ox. So did Ox. <laughs> That was the real rotating grapple, old boy. <laughs> yeah, we gave us time to play up there, too. Yeah. Well, at the risk of endorsing a product, that's an interesting uh, physical uh, demonstration on orbit of the fact that uh, things really are weightless. That's how the crew was rewarded when we did something uh, properly. <laughs> <laughs> Rick would release another handful. <laughs> Anna did more things right than anybody. She got most of them. <laughs> Dave uh, on orbit described uh, Dr. Rowan as, uh, as large in personality but uh, diminutive in stature. Whenever his personality got a little bit too large, we would uh, stuff him away in a locker for a few hours. And uh, then when a task needed to be done, it was my job to go, out, go down and get him out. <laughs> this was a somewhat unpleasant task for me, but uh, but Joe Joe seemed to like the freedom at times. And <laughs> the hard part was putting him back in there again later once we got him. <laughs> There's our, there's our guru here. Yeah. This is the story during his... <laughs> Demonstrating what happens if you ever drop a cat, it always ends up on its four feet, no matter what attitude. And it's We've had a lot of discussions about how this works, how yes. you can well, move around. He's like not that. shoveling the air. It, it's actually... He's... he's... <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do it? Gordo practicing his uh, landing technique, get ready for re-entry. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're lost in space there. The, the, the one on the right, of course, is a magnet, and the one on the left is just a pencil, and we had no idea if they were going to decide to mate. <laughs> <laughs> we're still waiting the results now.
Well, we get up in the morning and, uh, you know, brush our teeth and comb our hair and the rest of that stuff here. Some of the crew equipment we had was limited, so uh, we had to share it. <laughs> You're not allowed to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> This, this sequence we call Hair Wars. <laughs> As you might expect, the commander won. We had to devise a number of uh, exercise routines. <laughs> and our sleep arrangements looked a lot like uh, summer camp. A little bit of bunks here and there. Two of us slept anchored to lockers, two of us slept strung across the room, and two of us slept on the wall. And you notice that in zero G, when you relax, your arms tend to float up. It was very comfortable. Mm -hmm. We didn't always sleep with the night light on. Well, it's uh, constantly fascinating just to watch the way objects behave in zero gravity. Here we have uh, a set of gyro-stabilized binoculars. There was a little bit too much friction in them, so they were actually a bit gyro-unstabilized. <laughs> but uh, still, with 14 power binoculars, uh, it was just amazing what we could see on the ground. And uh, of course, I also enjoyed what I could see up in the sky, since I'm uh, an astronomer. Uh, we also carried some uh, science demonstration objects, commonly known as uh, TOYS. Um, this uh, was done primarily to uh, make some educational uh, footage which uh, we can use and distribute to science teachers throughout the country. Here, Bo uh, forgot to spin the gyroscope up and somehow it just didn't, didn't stay stable. Uh, so we're going to give him another chance and uh, here he's going to get it spinning. There we go. Of course, the uh, principle of gyroscopic stability has been around a long time. We use it for navigation. Our satellites use it when they uh, come out of the cargo bay. Um, but of course, without, the, uh, without gravity and just being able to float it free here, you can study the behavior uh, of the gyroscope and, and watch the way it moves around in, in a way that we never get a chance to do in, in laboratories on the Earth. And here comes Mr. Yo-Yo. Uh, <laughs> We had, so we, I, I've had a lot of discussions with physicist friends of mine about whether the yo-yo was going to work. Uh, and it worked fabulous. You could do it fast, you could do it slow, you could do it uh, to the ceiling. Uh, that's the famous oi-oi. Uh, Dave did flying saucers around the moon. He's a real champ, and if they don't let him into the Yo-Yo Association of America, there's just no justice in the world. If you, uh, if you let a, a paper airplane just uh, float, uh, it's pretty much carried away by the air currents in the shuttle, as you see here. And so it really doesn't take very much force just to start it on the most beautiful flight that you've ever seen of uh, any paper glider. The slinky, uh, without the sag uh, that you have to contend with in uh, 1G, behaved pretty much the same as it does in 1G. Uh, you can start to see that, of course, they've set up a sine wave oscillation here which continues to be reflected back and forth, and now a double one or perhaps a triple. And perhaps within there, you can also see the standing waves reflected back and forth. The centrifugal force, of course, keeps this little car going around its track. On Earth, when it gets to the top, it would, of course, fall out. In space, uh, what do you expect it's going to do? Well, with a little help from the doctor, sure enough, <laughs> it falls out. See, when you've been in space a little while, down is up and up is down. It doesn't make any difference. It really doesn't. Mission this complex requires strict discipline, uh, and uh, fortunately, we had uh, a well-disciplined crew. Of course, you know, you take four guys off the farm. Some of them are able to respond a little quicker and learn a little faster than others to uh, military movements. And <laughs> some guys just never learn. That's crazy. I'm not we did doing any more parades. <laughs> We did have a drill team, a uh, crack drill team here that we practiced every morning. Zero gravity's got to be fun. If you hadn't noticed or picked up on it by now, it just is a, a great deal. Well, in the words of an old philosopher, it ain't over till it's over, and I guarantee it's not over yet because we still have to land. And uh, here we are at uh, runway 15 at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, good calls from the folks uh, in the air and on the ground. John Young, weather pilot, 
The weather was good to the north, uh, so we landed with a slight tailwind. <coughs> and uh, coming down here at uh, 300 feet, Dave deployed the landing gear. And the orbiter flew beautifully, just as we uh, trained for it to fly in a shuttle training airplane. Look at the uh, vortexes being shed off the wingtips there. And when we touch down, you can see how the uh, smoke from the tires gets caught up in those vortices. Real pretty picture. Touchdown was at about 190 knots. So I understand about 2,700 feet down the runway. And uh, we used a total of 93 to 9,500 feet of runway during the rollout.